Hey guys, so Ruben and I are on the way to the restaurant. Happy anniversary. Hi. Happy anniversary, <laughs> Um, I just wanted to update you guys on my plastic surgery on my tummy tuck and liposuction. So I had paid the price in full and then I went to the gym and I was pretty excited about it but I have a lot of friends at the gym that have had procedures done. So I was excited and I told them that I was getting liposuction and they said, oh good job, where are you going? I mentioned the name of the place I was going and they were like, oh, have you researched it? Do you know anyone who's gone there? And they've known people who've had work there so I was like, oh, well, I looked on their website and everything seemed okay. And of course, they're salespeople, so they're going to just sell you on everything and try to give you a better price and get you to get your procedure done there. So I paid for it, and then I was thinking about it, and uh, in July, I go on vacation, so I was already debating whether I should have it done because, you know, I didn't want to be in pain when I'm on vacation. And then another thing is I start a new job right after I get back on, from vacation and I want to be like at a hundred percent so I was already debating not doing it but then when I read the reviews and saw how people were actually botched or came out worse than they did before they went in because they don't do full tummy tucks they do mini tummy tucks so why would I want to get cut up to have a half job done so anyway, so I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do it there, I'll save my money and go someplace else. And that's actually what Ruben had gotten me for our anniversary. And so, yes, I know, I got him candles and I got him <laughs> lotions and yeah, how does that compare to plastic surgery, but he's a simple man. He likes clothes from Walmart, he doesn't mind little things, but not that I do, but I have a little bit better taste better taste than you <laughs> better so yeah so then I'm not, I wasn't gonna get it done so I called them because I wanted my money back and it was a problem they didn't want to give me my money back so I was like there was it there wasn't any services rendered you need to give me my money back so I called the bank and I tell them hey these people aren't trying to give me my money back um, I'm not having the procedure done and they said well they already took the money out of your bank account it's just pending in your bank account but they have their money so long story short it was such a pain in the butt to try to get my money back from these people so right now I have a basically fraud um, investigation on them so I got my money back into my account but you know it's just till they finish their investigation which is gonna go through but I mean if I can't trust you to give me my money back if I want to reschedule whatever the case may be why would I trust you with anything else so I mean I have my money back for right now but if this doesn't go through or well I'm gonna have to go over there and act a fool and that's not something I want to do, but I mean, what do you do? <laughs> okay, Ruben time. wants a story time. <laughs> Ruben wants a story time. The last time you act a fool was So, okay, let's do, a, let's do a story time. So, this was back in like 2012? Yeah. 2012. Maybe 11. Uh -huh. I was uh, doing in-home care for an, a senior citizen, and on my way to work, I got in a car crash. So I ran into a Porsche Cayenne, which just so happened to be a California Highway Patrol's personal car. They called so many freaking cops to the scene. They made me cry because they were all attacking me. And so that day, you while did, I was at... You did make her dog fly out the window. Well, she should have had her dog in the carrier. So um, that day, the, the woman I would take care of passed away while I was at the car wreck scene. So not only did I lose my job, didn't have a car anymore because it was totaled, just my whole life was upside down. But I was trying to make the best out of it. So the girls were getting some type of awards or something that day at school, and I decided to take them to celebrate. So we went to... Lanny Ann? No, that's a bar, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <we laughs> to Farrell's. To the bar. <laughs> we took him to Farrell's, an ice cream shop here that's like old, old school, but it's pretty expensive. And so we all got our dinner plates and um, we ordered like this big ice cream dish that's called everything but the kitchen sink or something like that, which is like freaking like $40 or something for a thing of ice cream plus our food. So when the waitress comes back, 
she's like, you know, we, I give her my card to pay, and she's like, I'm sorry, but your card was your card was declined, and I was like, I have money, because I had just gotten paid. The woman I took care of, son, was so generous that he paid me like my first weeks, my last weeks, and then he gave me like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars extra, you know, just because he was really nice. And so I knew that I had money because I had just went to deposit the money before we went to dinner. And then I thought maybe the money didn't clear because I had to pay $500 to get my car out of the impound because it was so crazy. The All the cops that were there were like, you need to impound her car. You need to take her to jail. You need to do this and that. And so the cop that was on duty was like, hey, um, you know, they want me to tow your car, and I don't want to be that type of guy. I was just going to let you get a tow truck on your own and have it towed out of here, but now I have to take it to the tow yard. But he told me, I'm not going to take it to the police impound. I'm going to take it to another one where you could take it out in 45 minutes. So he did that. So I had went and paid the $500 to get my car taken out. And um, uh, so I thought maybe my checks hadn't cleared or something because I went and paid that money for the car. But I was like, no, I had more than that in there. So I should be fine. Plus the checks just got deposited. And I've never trusted banks. So I always would just have that account so I could cash my checks, take it to my house, put it in a box under the bed. And so um, I don't do that anymore, though. Okay, guys? Or people <laughs> door. <laughs> That's another story <laughs> time. So anyway, so uh, so then we're at the restaurant and she, I'm like, you need to run that card again. So she goes and there's tons of little kids because it's like a very family friendly restaurant. And so she goes and does my card again and comes back and she's like, this time it's declined again and it's not letting me do anything. So I was like, what the fuck? Oh wait, I don't think I was allowed to say that. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Oh my god, I know I have money in there. I'm going to call the bank. So I get on the phone with the bank, and the bank's like, your account is frozen for fraud. Um, you need to come into the bank to figure this out. I can't give you any information over the phone. You need to come in and take care of this matter. So I'm like, I'm at an effing restaurant right now. And all the kids are turned around, and the parents, like, you know, covered their ears. Like, I was going crazy. And so... I was like, I have effing money in there. What the F do you mean? It's Because I needed to pay for this like $150 dinner that we just had. So I went and I spoke with the manager and he let me leave like my social, my driver's license, everything in my freaking wallet with him so that I can go and get some money. And so I go to the bank and I walk in and I'm just mad. So I talk to the teller and I'm like, hey, there's some fraud on my account. And you know, I, I need some money, I need to go pay this restaurant I was just at. So he looks it up and he's like, oh, it's because you had three checks that were a large amount and we've never seen you put three checks from that account into your account at once. And I was like, okay, well, I just got paid. And he's like, well, we're gonna need the person who wrote these checks to call and verify them before we clear them because your account's been put on hold. And I'm like, She's passed, she passed away today. And they're like, then how did she write you the checks? And I was like, well, her son is on the account, too, and he wrote me the checks. And he's like, well, we're going to need her because she's the primary account holder. And I'm like, she's dead. What do you not get? Like, <laughs> how do you want me to call her? And so I call her son, but he's out of town because he flew out of town or something like the day, that day or something. And so he's like, he's not answering my calls. I'm like, oh my gosh, luckily I did have the shoebox full of money at home. So I went home and got the money, went back, paid the restaurant. Oh, but before I left the bank, uh, I told the teller, I need to talk to the manager. Like, like, why is all my money put on hold? Not just the one that you guys think is fraud. Why is my entire account frozen? He's like, well, that's what happens when there's a fraud on an account. We cancel the whole account for a while. So the manager comes and he's like, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. And I flipped out. I was like, so you're meaning to tell me that you have your head in the sand? Oh. oh, wait, wait, wait. You're digging that, the sand. I don't think you're allowed to say that on YouTube. You can beep it. Okay, that you have your D word in the sand and your hands tied behind your back? I don't even know what the hell that means now or <laughs> what, how that was relevant to what was happening to me, but that's 
what came out of my mouth. And he was like, no, I can't. I can't. And I was like, well, I need some money right now. I need you to release at least a little bit of my funds. And he couldn't. So I was like, I will blow this mother effer up if I don't get my mother effing money right now. He's like, I'm going to have to call security. He's like, I'm going to have to call security. And I said, no, you're going to give me my effing money right now. So he calls security and like three, and this was in the ghetto. So like three security guards walk up to us and he's like, am I going to need to uh, restrain, you. restrain you? And I said, I can walk my god self out of here. So he like, all three of them kind of huddle around me and make sure I leave. And so yeah, Ruben, <laughs> Ruben was pretty embarrassed that day, but um, I got the money cleared like the next day. Her son called and cleared it and everything was cool. It was all gravy, but it really sucked. So this isn't the first time stuff like this happens to me, but I don't know if you watched my first video um, of the place that I had gone, but if you ever want to do a procedure, do your research, not be a dummy like me and just get all brainwashed and okay, okay, you know? So yeah, I'm not going to have it done there, but um, one of my friends from the gym has had a lot of work done so in April for my birthday we're gonna plan a trip to her plastic surgeon and I'm gonna have everything done that I wanted but be till then I'm gonna work out really hard because it's really not that much that I need done or that I want done but I'm gonna try to work out really hard and eat right and maybe I won't even need a procedure right yep so yeah that was a story time and I let you guys know what was happening at uh, first I was really sad that I wasn't going to have it done because I was really looking forward to it. But now I'm okay with it because I sure as hell don't want to be botched. And I don't want to look worse than I already do. So, yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching, guys.